Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CPU Championship League Season 1 Finale. I hope you are ready, because it all starts right now. The first one is coming in hot here. There it is. Richter actually grabs the city. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, that was a big one. Oh, still alive here. Gets the drill. Up smash. Oh, does connect the mirror. Up in the 100% already. Oh, gonna have to play oh, 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 oh. He's practiced on it though. He's good. Oh. Ladies. And gentlemen, welcome back to the CPU Championship League. Oh my lord, we made it. We made it to the first ever season finale here in season one. My name is Fuji. I will be your host for today's matches. And oh my gosh, I am excited for this one. And I hope you are as well. It has been... A little bit since uh, week 10, the final week of the regular season. And we're back and we're ready to do this. So, the first thing I need to mention is that obviously every week before this, we had 16 random CPUs put into the mix and they battled, a lot, battled it out for points. And then of course they got added up into the top 16. I might even put up a graphic right now of the top 16 and all their points. And you can see the seeds. Because this bracket right here is not randomly put together, right? It's not randomly generated. This one, I put together myself. And it is seeded. Let me go over the seeds real quick. Number one, we've got Incineroar. Number 16, we have Richter. And they are going to go up against each other in the first round. Then you have Hero, who's 8th seed. And Cloud, who's the ninth seed. Then you have Ness at 4th seed. Kirby at 13th seed. Then you have the 15th seed versus the 12th seed. As Mega Man and Pikachu. I'm just going to go with the seeds on the right side from top to bottom, so pay attention. From top to bottom, we have the second seed versus the 15th seed, seventh seed versus the 10th seed, the third seed versus the 14th seed, and the sixth seed versus the 11th seed. So they're all mixed and matched. The first seed is on the opposite side of the bracket of the second seed, <sighs> which <clears throat> this is pretty much the fairest way to do this, I think. Obviously, we don't have a huge sample size of just 10 weeks, so the seeding, you know, does it mean a lot? Some of it does. I think we have a lot of good matchups here. Even including the 1 versus 16, I think that could go either way. But ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time that we start this bracket and we start this Season 1 finale. Before we do, I want you to go to the comment section right now and predict the winner. And then, you know, at the end you can edit your comment to say if you got it right or not. But right now, go down there and say, hey, I think blank is gonna win right whoever you want all right <clears throat> now that you've done that it's time we get this started so let's go all right here we are for the first matchup and we're on this crazy like 8-bit f0 stage whatever it's called i should have done more research before i started but here we are ladies and gentlemen it's Incineroar, and it is Richter, the number one seed, versus the number 16 seed. Oh, is that a footstool that he just jumped off Incineroar's head? That's crazy. So obviously, Incineroar, you know, he is the very, he's the first seed, man. He was the best in terms of points throughout the season. But he never actually won. That's the craziest thing, is he never actually won a CPU Championship League week, right? Not a single one. He got second twice, and he got, like, third, fourth a couple times as well, and... He, he had a lot of good showings, but he could never get the win. So here he is, trying to win it all for the first time. And hey, if you're going to win it all in only one week, you might as well do it in the finale. There's a grab, throws him on the other side. Good job by Incineroar, who's taking a decent little lead right here. And I'd say the stage, not too bad for either of them. It actually kind of helps out Incineroar a little bit. Oh, jumps over that axe. That was sketchy. I'm going to get into Richter here in a second, but I feel like... The first blood is coming in hot here. There it is. Richter actually grabs Incineroar and throws him off the right side. And so Incineroar, now, on the back foot, I guess, has to find the kill onto Richter to tie this one up. Oh, he might just do it here. No, he does not get it. He jumps up. This will hit Richter at 140%. Oh, going for a couple of smashes in the second one. Does work. So now they are all tied up on two stocks apiece. Whew, this is a good first round matchup, let me tell you. Two good players facing each other in the first round. This is just the first round, man. But anyway, Richter, he won, I believe, the very first week. 
and then only showed up one other time. He was tied with like five or six other people at 30 points. But because he won and just had good, you know, a decent, okay showing for his other placement, it put him above Pyramithra that also had won a week. And he just barely made it. In. Oh, the whip to the face of Incineroar as I'm trying to explain how you got here, Victor. Bro, that's crazy. Okay, the forward tilt for Incineroar right back. And it is a one stock appease matchup, perfectly even. Oh my lord, this is a close match. Okay, I'm gonna just start play by play casting this because this one is getting intense. All right, couple jabs right there, Incineroar. I'm trying to explain stuff. They're just fighting too quickly. No way, that doesn't kill. Okay, the upbeat does not kill. Richter is going to make it back, even though he has to hit the ground to take a little bit of damage. This is so... Oh my god, this is dangerous. The forward smash hits. The whip, a couple of them. He's throwing out the boomerang. Oh, but the upbeat dodges it and does a lot of damage right there. Really nicely done from Incineroar. Jumps up, but the up smash connects. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, the upbeat. Not quite there. Incineroar... Look at it grab him, he does! It's gonna throw backwards! And Incineroar, the number one seed, is still in it and is moving on to the second round. All right, for match number two, we have the eighth seed, Hero, versus the ninth seed, Cloud. So the closest in terms of seeds we're gonna see here in the first round. And, uh, well, both these characters, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and make my intro a little quicker for each character. Because last time, you know, I, I was a little bit long. I apologize for that. But hey, Cloud and Hero both won a week and then did decent in a couple other weeks or maybe just one other week. I can't remember exactly how they got here. But here, here they are right in the middle of the bracket at the ninth and 8th seed. So, okay, Cloud's going to have to use that limit to get back up. But yeah, this should be a very, very good match. And so far, so good. Both at 70%-ish. And a couple couple of RNG moves. Ooh, that was a big electric slash coming down from Hero. And it was a perfect shield from Cloud, but there is multiple hits. So, unfortunately, Cloud goes down to that one. And he goes down pretty early, to be honest with you. That, like, 70%. It's not a good look. And Cloud being pressured off the side here as well. I mean, Hero, he's been very, very strong throughout his tenure here in the CPU Championship League. And obviously, Cloud's been great, too. But, so far, it has been Hero and Hero alone who's going crazy. That limit is almost charged, by the way, for Cloud. If he could just get a little bit charged... Okay, there it is. He's got the limit. Oh! Rolled backwards! Oh, so unfortunate for Hero. Should have rolled forwards, but got a little scared. Rolled backwards. It hit anyway with that neutral B limit, which was really nicely timed from Cloud to take Heroes for stock, and now they are tied up on stocks. Hero has a slight lead, but don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. This is still anybody's game. Cloud can easily make a comeback right here. The zoom coming in from Hero, though, he's quite fast. You jump around, you can get around this platform little stage. It's not too crazy of a stage, just a platform up on the left, and then one on the right that goes up and down with a giant, like, Weird brain thing in the background. Cloud making it back there, just barely the limit. There it is, it's charged, he runs up. Not gonna find it there, perfect shield! <sighs> perfect shield from Cloud is good, because it gets him in a position to use that forward smash. Oh, the limit! It does a decent amount of damage, and actually, Cloud is basically tied back up this game. And they are even right now. 99 to 101%, ooh, another electricity spark going into the, I don't know it, it, it's like a weird electric sword thing that he does right there he brings down a thunderbolt uh, can I just call it thunderbolt right like like a Pokemon move yeah we'll just call it that either way it's it's a pretty good move cloud hitting neutral airs or oh, another thunderbolt coming down thunder slash how about I call it thunder slash that's kind of cool right that sounds yeah I like that I like that thunder slash we'll call it that okay another side B from cloud doing more damage 161 percent going for the two frame not there though. Get up attack is actually what's coming out. Ooh, Sis not going down. Ooh, perfect shield into the up smash and Cloud takes the lead after being behind with limit. Ready to go. Uses it on the up B. Very interesting right there. Man, Hero, how quickly can he find this one? Hopefully very quickly for his sake. But Cloud, how much damage can he get down? 53% already. Cloud has turned up here. And there we go. There is Thunder Slash. Not getting the kill though. I can't believe it. Hero still can't find it 172 percent for cloud oh the up air still not enough oh my lord cloud is surviving somehow man oh i thought he was gonna go for a down air right there it's not gonna happen cloud hitting the neutral beat hero at 87 percent still needs to take the stock there it is thunder slash 
There it is. I was scared for a second that I wasn't going to get it, but it does. Thunder Slash gets the kill, but is it too little too late? 92% for Hero. He's going for Flame Slash this time, and Accelerate comes out. Not Zoom, by the way. I said that earlier. It's, just, it's Accelerate. Zoom is a different one. Cloud going for the forward smash, and it connects. And the small upset, not a huge upset, but a small upset nonetheless. Cloud beats Hero to move to the second round. And for our third matchup, we have the number four seed Ness versus the number, what is it, 13 seed Kirby here on uh, the Star Fox stage. This is, you know what, actually, this is like a very OG stage for a couple of OG characters. So I can respect that. Now, Ness, he's up in the fourth seed because he won one of the weeks and did really well in a few other ones. And Kirby, Kirby has never actually won any of the weeks, but... You know, that's that's why he's the 13th seed. But you know what? I believe Kirby can pull this one out. I believe he can do it. They are just fighting back and forth, by the way. They are going at each other's throats. Just non-stop action against each other. Ooh, perfect shield. Really nicely done. Oh, not no punish there from Kirby while he's charging up. That's all right. Okay, another couple of misses there. But this one, I mean, it is literally just small aerial against small aerial. There's a grab. Down throws him. It is just back and forth right now. But Kirby... Finally, on the back foot here at 113%, getting hit off the tail end there. Oh, Kirby getting hit off. Oh, the PK Thunder. It's still not enough, though. He's still alive at 137%. Has to find something here, though. As Oh, man, these forward airs are so scary. Okay, a couple down tilts. Not going to matter too much. Kirby's still alive here. Gets the drill up smash. Oh, drill up smash off the top of the... I, I don't know what that is, but the, the little thing there what does that call it? like i guess the wing right the little wing that was so nasty obviously ness gets the kill i believe off an up tilt or not up something but either way maybe it was not there either way kirby takes first blood oh he's getting punished in the corner here against the tail wing that's brutal 70 percent for kirby now oh the up air he's not quite gonna get it but kirby is in a really really rough spot now he has to make it back down he does the drill Going for a down smash. Okay, drill down smash. That is clearly one of his better maneuvers right now is drill into a smash attack. Oh, the... F oh, PK Thunder coming in hot! It misses. Kirby's still alive, just floating up there, man. Gets to the ground. Though. Oh, forward air. This is a crazy match, dude. Wow. Obviously, Ness a higher seed and more likely to win this. The dash attack does get the kill, and Kirby is on his last stock. Can he make this crazy comeback? to be the underdog story of the bracket. I don't know, man. Ness is going pretty crazy right now. It doesn't look good. Ness getting up there. Kirby has to find something here. An up smash. Something crazy. Oh, the drill doesn't connect with the down smash, though, this time. As Kirby at 51% getting up there as well. And Ness just... He has him on the ropes. Kirby just... It doesn't feel like he knows what to do against Ness right now. Okay, gets the crab, throws him downwards, trying to find something. But is it too little, too late, man? 79%, and Ness still has that second stock on him, Matt. This is, oh, this is brutal for Kirby, but for Ness, he is feeling really good, because even if he's to go down right here, oh, the whiff on the grab, the up throw, doesn't kill. And Kirby does make it down, the PK fire. Oh, but there it is, Ness. Playing masterfully with the up air, taking down Kirby, and he will move on to the second round. All right, for the final match on the left side of the bracket, in the first round, of course. It's Mega Man, the fifth seed, and Pikachu, the twelfth seed. And of course, these two characters are interesting because I feel like they, for being so far apart in, on the standings, they are evenly matched. I mean, this one can go either way. I truly do believe that. Mega Man and Pikachu both hitting an up smash so far. Uh, I believe Mega Man did, I think he got second twice throughout his tenure. And Pikachu just had a few really good placements up in the third, fourth realm, realm I guess, yeah, third, fourth area, which has gotten him here. And he's taken a pretty sizable lead. By the way, by the way we are in Green Hill Zone, this pretty awesome Sonic stage with some good music going on here. So jam out to that, cat jam, if you will. Good play right there from Mega Man with the back air to catch Pikachu in the air. And he's, he is making a comeback slowly but surely, but Pikachu hitting the forward air. Oh, that sent perfectly over the hill right there. 
off the side. We do have walk-offs over here. And there you go. That is what happens when you don't send perfectly over the hill. You can tech off of it like Pikachu just did right there at 101%. He has taken first blood. He could be, you know, the first true underdog story here. Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. Pikachu jumping over that one. That was huge for him to stay alive. Okay. Mega Man. Ooh, catching him. Pikachu out with the up smash. And, man, you could say that this matchup is electric so far. Both going back and forth on each other. Just going off. You know what I'm saying? Good little up B thing there from Mega Man. Pikachu's got him over here on the side. Mega Man does a good job of rolling on the other side. Using that leaf shield on Pikachu. Getting the dash tag as well to do a little bit extra damage. All right, Pikachu again has him over on the side here. Just Thundershock. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't want to go court. Oh my goodness, it's over here. They're fighting on the side. The up smash connects, but it's not enough. Pikachu back air throws him back towards the middle of the stage. They're back in the neutral. It's so scary, man. Just a, just a grab from Pikachu right here could be it. I can't believe Nair just sent to that side. N Pikachu Nair just sent backwards, and it killed Mega Man, and putting him, it put him on his tournament stock right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I haven't mentioned it until now, but, you know, it's not like they're fighting for points. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Pichu with the forward air, by the way. They're playing over here really close. Got to be careful. But, again, they're not playing for points. This is win or go home, man. Like, you win it all, or you basically lost. This is for the season. The ch to be crowned. The season one champion, Mega Man with a down smash, tying it up on stocks. Pichu now on his final stock as well. Pikachu! Ooh, he's over here. They're so close. That is so scary, man. But Mega Man stays alive. If he is your pick, you're sweating right now. But it's not over with the... Oh, he gets caught in the down smash. And as I was saying that, I'm so sorry. It is over because Mega Man is out. And Pikachu moves on. All right. For the first matchup on the right side of the bracket, or the fifth match of today, we've got Byleth, the second seed, versus Jigglypuff, the fifth seed and ladies and gentlemen uh, Byleth is our only if I believe the only character to have won twice in the CPU Championship League and Jigglypuff <clears throat> you know despite taking an early lead here I truly do believe is the imposter of the bracket because man Jigglypuff made it here just on sheer amount of time she made it to the brackets only never got past the second round never got past the second round so I am pretty confident that Byleth will take down Jigglypuff. And even if Byleth somehow lost, I don't know if Jigglypuff would make it past the next round. Anyway, there's a great up smash, but teched nicely from Jigglypuff, who actually, a lot of characters would have died there, but Jigglypuff floating enough to get back to stage. Oh, ooh, he's flying in in the background of the stage there. Jigglypuff staying alive through a lot of big hits right now, by the way, which not going to survive that one. The up air is too much. Byleth with the first blood, despite, like I said, Jigglypuff having a pretty good start there. But I just, this is a tough matchup for Jigglypuff in general. It's it's possible, but it's not likely. I just got to keep it a buck fifty with y'all. It is unlikely that Jigglypuff wins this one. I apologize if you're rooting for. Uh, it's just it's tough. It's tough. Unless you're Hungry Box, this character is um is pretty brutal to play. There's an up smash teched again nicely, but I don't think Jigglypuff's even hit here. This could be a zero to death if Byleth gets one more big hit right here. I believe, anyway. Going for again. The ups... Not up smash. The up air is all it takes. And this might be a three stock, man. That, I think, was a zero to death. Or very close to it, if nothing else. And Jigglypuff, I think, sees the writing on the wall. Just trying to stall out for time. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to... I don't even know, man. I don't know what Jigglypuff's plan is right now. But there's a great up B into side B combo. It's a, a Byleth special. Could this be double... Like back to back. This is crazy. Byleth, the second seed, has a good chance, man, to win it all here. Another up B into an up air. Another zero to death and just destruction. A three stock. And Jigglypuff, goodbye. Byleth, welcome to the next round. All right. For the sixth matchup, ladies and gentlemen, we have two Titans, honestly, going up against each other on distant planets. It is Snake and it is Bowser, the seventh seed versus the tenth seed, but... Do not get it twisted. Bowser, I think, is the dark horse of the bracket. And honestly, Snake is probably the other one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think this is the two dark horses of the bracket facing off in the first round. Uh, this should be an incredible match. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be one-sided one way or the other. But 
I don't think so. I think these two are going to put up a good fight against each other. They know the stakes. They understand what they're fighting for. And that is a chance to win it all. Right? <clears throat> and to do that, they got to make it past the first round. And obviously the next couple rounds as well. That up B is a little scary right there, but he's not going to get punished. The up smash does connect, and they are up in the 100%. Already! Ooh! That was really nicely done from Snake. The jabs right to just send him right onto the platform where he left the C4 and then blowing up the C4. Super well played. Bowser sitting on the other C4. Okay, he's all right. He's fine. But Snake, 133%, but has a decent little lead right here. Bowser finding the up tilt. Not getting hit by the up smash either. Ties this one up in terms of stocks anyway. Is a little bit behind in percent. But I don't think that's too big of a deal. I think he will be just fine with what he's doing right now. Although he hasn't gotten a hit here and a lot of damage being put down. Bowser over 100% now. Snake doing a really good job of just not getting hit. There we go. Gets the grab though. And Bowser finding some stuff here. A little frame, flame breath. Not hitting anything. It's probably just bad breath. You know what I'm saying? It's just Bowser's bad breath. All right, ooh, even the up B getting the hit there, and the Nikita not going to find it. Rolls on to the C4. I saw it just last second. So well done from Snake there. That pressure is... That was tough, because I guess he could have dropped off the platform and went down low, potentially, but there was really no way for him to get back up there without getting kind of dominated right there. So Bowser, now on the back foot, on his tournament, his last stock, if he can't, if he can't stop Snake, this is it for him. Of course, Snake is the higher seed, so... <clears throat> you would expect him to win, but man, I'm telling you, this is, this could go either way still. Oh, really nicely done. How did that miss? That went right through Bowser. I can't believe it. Just throws him on the ground and up tilt. Snake, actually kind of dominating. Very scary, by the way. He dominates Bowser, and he's moving to the second round. Here we are, the seventh matchup. The second to last round. Or, Matt, second to last match here in the first round. The penultimate match, if you will, of the first round, as I like to say. Well, the PK Thunder coming out early from Lucas here. We're on this weird stage. I don't know what it's called, uh, but it's got, like, the little leaves and everything and the crazy green background that you can uh, green screen something onto, but I probably won't do it because I'm lazy. Another PK Thunder in a really weird spot. I don't know about all these from Lucas. He could have just gone back to the platform there. But either way, look, Lucas, he's done decent in his time here in the CPCL. And of course, Link, is it Link, what? Inkling has, she won in week 10. And just by the way, did beat Lucas in the semifinal match to get here. So this is kind of a grudge match between these two, a salty run back, if you will. Uh, Lucas wanting to get revenge for, you know, losing in that round. And it, this is the ultimate revenge. You take, oh, big up smash. Gonna get Lucas back into back into this one. You know, tying this one up. But yeah, Lucas, oh, going for another up smash. Perfect shielded, though. Really nicely done from Inkling. Probably didn't have to, but, you know, it, there's no problem with it as long as you hit the perfect shield, right? You just don't want to miss that. Oh, down air. Doing a little bit of damage there. Lucas staying alive. Going for something there. Both of them hitting each other. Okay, he's gonna have to go for another PK Thunder. He's practiced on it, though. He's good. Oh! Was that the back air? With the spike, I don't, I, I'd have to watch that. I looked away for like half a second right as that happened. That was kind of crazy. But either way, Lucas takes an early lead here. Now, how fast can Inkling get him off that first stock? Or, oh, forward air comes in, does a lot of damage. PK Thunder! He actually makes it to the ledge. That was so close. And the PK Fire does connect as well. How much damage can Lucas do before he goes down? That's the big question right now. Because if Inkling can... Oh, there it is. Grounds in with that and is just going to hit him with the down smash. 21% is all Lucas could muster up. But hey, that's all right. He's still... He feels good. He's in it. Inkling is on the back foot technically. Although this one is either player's game right now. I mean, they, they are both in this one for sure. Lucas going to have to use that PK Thunder to get back. And he misses the ledge. Oh, no. He floated too far away. And Lucas... Oh, that is brutal for him. Just SDing like that. Oh, you hate to see it, especially in the top 16 bracket, man. Oh, my goodness. That is just, that hurts to see. Lucas has a, a mountain to climb. He was on top, you know, or he, at least he was pretty high up on the mountain, climbing it at a good pace. Up smash, though, gets the kill on Link. Uh, I keep saying Link. On Inkling. And Lucas, oh, man, kind of ties this one back up. Still a little bit. 
down in percent, but he could still win this somehow, someway. This would be a crazy win for Lucas, and I'd be a little scared to face him if he comes back from this one. I mean, th this is going to be tough. Oh, the smash attack. Thought he could get the grab, but the rope snake just a little too short. Can't find the grab, and now at 90%, he's fighting a massive uphill battle right now. This is, this is tough, but Inkling... Going for the up smash, not finding it. Rope Snake, not too small that time. Getting a little chip damage. Nothing too crazy. Luke's at 99%. This is it. For both of them, by the way. Up, up smash connects. That is his bread and butter move. He loves hitting those up smashes, man. He hits a little aerial there into the down air. Into the Rope Snake. He wants to get her on that top platform, maybe. Okay, Lucas has tied this one up, ladies and gentlemen. It is anybody's game. Another back air hitting hard. The Rope Snake comes out. PK fire doesn't actually go out. And... Lucas, against all odds, as the 14th seed, beats the 3rd seed, Inkling, on a huge comeback? I, I don't, he moving on, wow. And for the last match of the first round, match number 8, we have Banjo and Kazooie, the 6th seed, versus Meta Knight, as the 11th seed. And Banjo, he's done well in his career, obviously Meta Knight, he, he came in early, right? He's been on that top 16 leaderboard for almost the entirety of the CPU Championship League. And man, he's, he's just been around. He's been around. He kept himself afloat. He had enough points built up. And here he is, right? And Banjo, he's had some really good showings. A lot of good plays. Came in a little bit later um, in the weeks, but he's here, right? And he actually has a decently higher seed. Six versus 11. Obviously has a bit of an advantage in terms of we, we expect Banjo to win. But... Meta Knight can definitely win this. I mean, he we have not seen a ton of him, like I said, for a while. And he's back. He's got short range, but man, can he go hard? Okay, he's gets him over to the side here. and It is very scary. Oh my goodness, what happened? I don't know how the clouds work down there on this stage. But either way, Meta Knight actually goes down. And his up B was not strong enough, which is rare. But it was not strong enough to get him back to the stage. And so Banjo and Kazooie have a sizable lead as of right now. Meta Knight trying to find his way back into this one. Needs to find the kill here. Going off the edge here. Going for the two frame. Not going to find it. The jabs come through. Banjo doing a bit of damage right there. He's got... He, he can zone out pretty well. The forward smash though. Just really nicely played right there for Meta Knight. Just seeing the down air. Standing right on the edge of it. Right where he's still in range of his forward smash but won't get hit. And just takes down Banjo's first stock. That was nicely done. So now Meta Knight... Banjo going back and forth on hits, but he's got the 69% buff hitting the side B. Can he go for another one? Oh, what a... I think that was down B. Dodged some damage there. Did get hit afterwards, though. It didn't really matter too much. Another side B attempt, but okay, going for a couple hits there. Finding another one, just playing extremely well right now. But Banjo on the 69% buff now finds the jabs and the little egg. Throws out a grenade. Ooh, okay. Okay. Hits with the grenade, kind of, I mean, you know, Meta Knight just kind of held onto it, but still. Okay, now, both of them pass that 69% buff that they had, but Meta Knight at 130, 141%, oh my goodness, if that up air had hit, it would have taken down Meta Knight. The side B being shielded nicely and punished accordingly. Flying above, oh my goodness, okay, he does have the up B, he's fine, I don't know why, I got a little scared there. Ooh, air dodging into the side B. Not exactly what you want to see if you're Meta Knight. But he's still alive here. He can still make this happen. The forward air actually connecting on all three of them and taking down Banjo. Sending him to his final stock. Can Meta Knight do it? Can he get enough damage down? Or will Banjo find the move? And he does. The up tilt is all it takes to take down Meta Knight. Who misses his up B as well. And wait, they're going down here. Meta Knight needs to make it back up this time. They're fighting down here. This is so scary. But they both can make it back this time. Meta Knight with a slight lead, the little blue egg stopping, interrupting Meta Knight right there. Going for a forward air again. Jeez, this is so scary being down here, man. Meta Knight does make it back, though. He's fine. He's got a lot of jumps. He's got a great up B to make it back. This is so, so close. The up smash after the jabs. Really nicely done for Banjo, who gets the grab, throws him forward, and hits him with a grenade. But can't get another grenade as Meta Knight keeps himself alive until the forward smash comes through. And Banjo and Kazooie, of course, take down Meta Knight. And they are the final. The, the, the final pairing? The, it's the final character to move to the second round. On to the second round. Is your pick still in it to win it?
All right, for the first matchup of the second round, it's Incineroar, the number one seed versus Cloud, the number nine seed here on Town. Or something, right? It's called Town, something, something Animal Crossing Town. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. This is a classic, great stage, very competitive. We love it, okay? We all love it. M maybe you don't love it, but like, generally it's pretty good. Anyway, Incineroar, already off to a pretty good start here in... You know, he is our number one seed, right? Though he never won any single week of the CPU Championship League, he is still, by far, the points leader. You know what I'm saying? You cannot count him out. Although the limit is charged up and can Cloud hit it? That is the question right now. Goes for the up B on it, though. And actually, you know what? that did a lot of damage. I'm not going to lie. That 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 was a good connection. There it is. Ooh, misses on the, uh, the, the throw right there, the back throw. Good shield. Perfect shield coming out from Cloud, though. Incineroar still with... Oh, there you go. Throws him into the ropes backwards. Cloud is going to make it back, though, because he threw him in the wrong direction. The side B does a little bit of damage there. The up B versus the up B? Was that? I don't even know, man. The side B doing a little bit more damage, even. And honestly, this one is pretty much tied up. Cloud has the range advantage. Incineroar probably has the straight-up damage advantage. But, hey, with that limit... You can't really count out Cloud's damage either, but hey, Incineroar taking Cloud down for first blow. Okay, Incineroar, you know, it, he's just showing what he's made of, you know? He said, you know what, you're going to take me off this sock anyway. I don't want you to do that. I'm going to take it off myself, and I'm going to beat you anyway. That's that's his mantra. He's going to beat him anyway, right? Well, I mean, a perfect shield into an up smash is really nice from Cloud, but oh my goodness, Incineroar has turned up. He said, screw this stock. I'm going all in. I actually... You know, I would usually say that was, you know, a misplay or, like, he's trolling or something. I think that was actually genuinely a play that he wanted to do, right? He didn't want to play scared. He wanted to go for this. He gets the back scratcher or whatever you want to call it. See, that is where Cloud used neutral B limit. He should have just used the, the up B limit there. That was not smart. But, either way, Cloud is now on his last stock. And this is it, man. If he, if he loses here, he cannot be crowned as champion. Incineroar knows that, of course, and he is going to go all in. As I was saying, though, I think Incineroar did do that on purpose because he wanted to just be full-on aggressive. Okay, here we go. The up B connecting again, doing a lot of damage. But Incineroar is going to make it back and be just fine. A couple of neutral breeze getting the hit here. Cloud going for a back air there. Kind of nice. Another neutral air this time, though. Charging up that limit. Just calling the bluff. Charging it all the way up. Ooh, nice roll forward there from Incineroar there. Uh, Incineroar, though, is what I meant to say. They are dodging each other's moves left and right. Incineroar still on that song. Oh, as I say that, drops the shield just a little too early. Going for the perfect shield, maybe. And Cloud, all of a sudden, he's back in it with a chance. You know, it's not over yet. That was a really nice interruption right there. Going for the up B. Can't spike it, though. Neutral B. Oh, not hitting it. That could be it. Throwing him off the ropes. It is it. Throwing it backwards. Cloud doing his best to make it back. But it's not enough. Incineroar. Looking promising, moving to the semis. For the second match of the second round, <laughs> it's Ness, the fourth seed, versus Pikachu, the twelfth seed, who did find an upset. And here we are on the uh, new Donk City Hall stage. We're going to be flying up on this platform here in just a second. And, you know, checking out the different levels of the hotel, or the, the city hall, I guess it is. It's not, is it a hotel? Is it a it, I don't know what this is, man. It's big. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, <clears throat> it's not a hotel, right? No, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Pikachu and Ness. Uh, Pikachu with a pretty early start here. Uh, pretty early lead, I should say. Starting out. Oh, that was a really nice forward air. Got him over on the side there, but not quite, quite going to get him down. Oh my goodness, that down air. He went for it. Not quite going to get it, though. Ness is, is struggling here, man. For a character we saw do really well in that first round. The PK Thunder not going to do anything, man. Pikachu. He, I mean, what do you expect, man? It's Pikachu. He's not going to be damaged by electricity, at least, you know, not not like that. Maybe later, but not right now. Pikachu with the Nair doing quite a significant amount of damage. The PK Fire not even connecting because of the perfect shield. Really well done. Another perfect shield. Pikachu is on fire right now. And not because of the PK Fire, by the way. It is because he is playing out of his mind. The down air even connects. And the up air just can't quite find the kill, though. Needs to find it. Before he gets cheesed out or some weird thing happens where he SDs or something. You just want to find that kill while you've got the chance. While you have the momentum. 
Ness staying alive though, not getting hit by anything too crazy. Jumping over that, ooh, but the up smash, finding the kill onto Ness and Pikachu with a really good start. The up air from Ness does connect, does do a good chunk of damage. Now can, how, what can Ness do here, right? How can he find his way back into this one? The up air, that is it. That is what he needed. He finds it and he ties this one back up. And I like, you know, jumping up to the platform there instead of trying to use the PK Thunder. And as I say that, he's not going to go for the PK Thunder. And actually hits Pikachu with it. Okay, you know what? It worked out for him. Maybe not exactly what he was planning on doing, but it did work out. The Electro Shocks, or the Thunder Shocks coming off of Pikachu doing a little bit of damage. This one is really close. The back throw, not quite going to get the kill yet, buddy. He's not quite that damaged. You know what I'm saying? We're flying back down, defying the odds of gravity. But we are back on the ground floor with the walk-offs on the side. Pikachu... At 86% Ness, actually having a lead, a couple of jabs over there. He's got him close to the side. Oh, going for that forward and not quite going to find it though. Now Pikachu has him over there. What can he do? Oh, the back air from Ness falling as he's hitting the ground. Perfectly timed and gets Pikachu, you know, maybe caught out a little bit. Just didn't expect that. And Pikachu's hot start, he is cooling down fast because Ness has, he has found the sauce. And he is just saucing up Pikachu right now. He's, he's cooking a Pikachu curry right now or something like that. Got him on fire even. Using the yo-yo. Doing a little extra damage. Pikachu needs to find this one. And he got to find it quick, man. The PK Thunder. Oh, baby. He's juggling him with the PK Thunders. And now, like I said, maybe later, the PK Thunders will come out and do some damage. Pikachu at 84% on his last stock. This is to go to the semis, man. You've got, you've got to put it all out on the line. Pikachu's got to do everything. He's got to bring out every stop he's got. You cannot... Hold any strategy. Actually gets him off the ledge there. It was really nicely done. Going for anything. Hitting the up air. Pikachu, I mean, not out of it, but this is... It's it's looking rough right now, Pikachu. Try, he got to find the kill move. He's got to find it. Finds the down air, but it's still... It's not quite going to get the kill. The nair comes down for Ness. He does do a little bit of damage. Pikachu at 96%. The forward air just connects in Ness. And this is the second two-stock... And he's moving to the semis to face Incineroar. For our third match of the second round, we have the number two seed, Byleth, versus the number seven seed, Snake, on Pokemon Stadium 2. A very, a classic stage. We all know it. We all, we all know it too well, to be honest with you. But these two characters, man, these are two juggernauts going up against each other. Byleth's real first test, I'll be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I don't think... Jigglypuff was much of a uh, much of a threat, <clears throat> but Snake already dispatched of one of the tougher characters that was in this bracket in Bowser. So obviously feeling good about himself, but man, they, they they both have the results. They both have what it takes to win it all. They, this could genuinely go either way. And right now, Snake on that 69% buff, but there you go, Byleth getting him off that one quick. And these, it, it's pretty even. There is a C4 underneath that left platform, as you can see it right there. <clears throat> Rolls right onto it. Oh, going for the spot dodge. Very uh, smart, right? Expecting him to pop it instantly. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Rolls through the bow. I can't believe she just held that. That was a little scary. But, hey, they're both high up in the 120 percentages, but keeping it even. Neither character are going to give each other too much here. Another C4, but this time, well done to dodge it, but you can't dodge that up tilt, man. That leg, it's just tough to deal with. The up B into the nair, got him at 150% into down smash. I think Snake was probably expecting an up smash or a forward smash, not expecting the down smash, which hits behind her as he tries to go for the landing down there and does lose his first stock. It is a close match. It is a very close match. Okay, but... Byleth taking quite a bit of damage here. Dodging that rocket right there really nicely done. Forward smash not quite going to hit. Byleth at 92% though. Ooh, that was a good up B into the side B combo. A classic. The up there doing a bit of damage as well. But man, this is this is tight. I like Snake's movement right now. He's very confident. He's keeping his distance, but not too far away, right? You don't want to be too far away. You want to keep her somewhat close proximity. That was a good down sma down air. Apologies. Oh, both dodging the up tilts right there with the spot dodge. You could just see how good both these characters are. I mean, genuinely, these are probably that up smash. That up smash was nasty from Snake. 
getting the kill. Ugh, but you can just see it, man. Ooh! Big up B into the up air. And this is tied. Ladies and gentlemen, it's tied. 0%, 0%, one stock apiece to move to the semifinals on the right side of the bracket. Oh, man, this is as close as it gets. They are dodging everything from each other. This, this is crazy. But you can see it. Like I was trying to say before, either one of these characters, I think, have to be... I mean, maybe other than Incineroar, kind of the favorite to win it all, especially with the way they're playing. They are just... Oh man, this is this is a great, great match so far. But how will it end? A 10% difference right now between Byleth and Snake, and now it's only 2%. They are going back and forth. Going for the up B, not quite finding it. The C4 does connect, dodging out on the rocket. Then Akita not finding it. Woo. Both going for a down air, but only Snake connects. 81% for Byleth. This is so scary. Has to throw that grenade away. Does do it well. Grabs the other one, though, and doesn't throw it in time, so it does blow up on her good. Uh, Nair into the dash attack. Oh, calling out the roll with the up tilt. It is also really nice. The up air, though. A bunch of damage. The forward... Not forward smash. That's up smash. Big damage, but Byleth's alive, and it's not over yet, my friends. The Nair, the forward smash, not finding it. Can Byleth make this one happen? Or will Snake take down the Distance Demon? Whew, that was a perfect... I mean, not a perfect shield, but it... Oh, that was a perfect shield, though. He needed to shield that forward smash, though, because that was Tipper. It would have killed for sure, especially that far away. Oh, the Nair. This is so tight. It's, oh, my God. I don't know what's about to happen, man. The up till... Oh, double perfect shield. Can't she snipe? She's not going to go for it. This, they, this is Sweaty Palms jumping over the C4. The jabs. All right, back into the neutral for a second. Oh, rolling onto the C4. Wait, he doesn't blow it up, though. The grab, the back throw. Byleth going for the down tilt. No, the Nairs won't connect. Oh, my God. They are, this is literally totally even. One big hit from either of them, and it's over. The side B for Byleth. It connects, and it takes down Snake in what probably the best match, man, that we saw. Wow, Byleth move into semifinals. The last match of the second round, featuring Lucas, the 14th seed, versus Banjo and Kazooie, the 6th seed. And man, this, I would say, you know, Banjo has a, has a pretty big edge in terms of positioning on the leaderboard at least, but man, Lucas showed that that doesn't matter. You already beat the 3rd seed, okay? So he's coming out here trying to win it all, and technically, I just, you know, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but technically, Lucas versus Ness in the finals is still a possibility, and obviously, maybe, probably not all of you, uh, probably not many people actually want to see that, right? But it is, you know, it would be kind of funny if that did happen, and it's still possible right now, if Lucas can make it there. Of course, he's got to get past Banjo first, and then, of course, has to pa get up past Byleth, which is, <clears throat> that is a tall, tall task, especially after what we just saw, which was... Man, that was one of the best matches we've ever seen in the CPU CL, to be honest with you. Anyway, Lucas going for that smash, obviously not connecting on that one. He did get the up throw, though, which was nice. This one's pretty close. Man, look at the egg spam. Just doing a ton of damage. The forward air even connecting there, too. Going for the two frame, not going to find it. PK Fire doing a good chunk of damage. Maybe he doesn't want to go for another one. No. He's going to double shield the up tilts there. Both of them still alive. Almost completely tied up the up air with what... That's how he clinched the last match. It's not quite going to get it this time. Or at least it's not going to get the kill this time. Is He's going to have to get it the old-fashioned way. The PK fire might do it, honestly, if he can connect it. Rope Snake jumps over the side. Be really nicely done because that definitely would have gotten the kill. Oh, man. Using the grenade against Banjo, who obviously brought it onto the match up here. Oh, there's the grenade for Banjo, though. Getting a little bit done. Can he get it? He actually suicides with it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't actually suicide, but he, you know, he just holds onto it. There it is. The grab into the up throw. That is going to take the stock, especially on that platform. And Lucas with an early lead here, even getting another grab and throwing him backwards. <clears throat> now, I don't think he's going to go for the strat. Oh, actually hitting the PK Thunder with his body, which is kind of... It's a little sketchy to do that. There is the up tilt from Banjo, though, taking that first stock off Lucas. Like I was trying to say, though, I, he's not going to go for that strat that we saw in Cinderor Gofu uh, of just SDing. He was trying to get as much damage as he possibly could. And you know what? 30%, it's decent. It's nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but he'll be just fine. PK Fire is continuing to come out. Shaman uh, in the background, just chilling. 
Looking uh, quite menacing, I guess. I don't know. Oh, he's gonna fly away. <clears throat> Lucas, Banjo, I mean, this is literally, this is like the last match where it is just, it's been even almost the entire way through. Pretty much, they have been perfectly even against each other. So, but here we go, Banjo with a small lead, take it, and you know, small leads mean a lot in close matchups as that up smash connects and does a little bit more. Lucas, can he find anything here, man? He grabs the grenade. I don't love that for him. He gets hit by another one, and Banjo, menacing, but not going to actually do anything. The up air connects, and there's the side B. That is brutal for Lucas as he goes down to his final stock. The forward smash as well, connecting, and Banjo turning up right now, looking like he's trying to go to face Byleth in the semifinals. He wants it. Can he get it? Or can Lucas somehow find his way back into this matchup? It's not looking good, though. The back air even connecting as well. It just seems like Lucas has lost his mojo. He can't hit anything anymore. He's not even throwing stuff out. There we go. PK fire. Getting him over there. Banjo had that over there. Wait, PK Thunder dragging him off to the side. Lucas cheesing him off the side there with the PK Thunder really nicely done. That is what we need to see. But the grab, the up throw, not quite going to be the, the up smash under the platform. Will he go for it again? No, not this time. We haven't seen too many up smashes come out from Lucas, though. He does get the grab. PK Fire trying to find something. He Can he do this? Can he make this comeback? The up smash. Oh, dodge, though. The back throw, not enough. He's still out there. Oh, God. PK Thunder. He does make it back. He does grab the ledge. He gets the grab. This is this is kind of close. I mean, Banjo still has a significant lead, but it is not over yet, my friends. Oh, there's the up smash. Is that going to be enough? It's not. Lucas staying alive on 128%. Oh, my goodness. That was so close. Wait, the PK Thunder. Wait a second. It's down there. The down air. Oh, he stays alive. Wait. This is so... Oh, my God. That was, that was scary for both sides. PK Thunder again trying to cheese out. I like the idea behind it. It keeps them in a safe space to go for it. PK fires. PK Thunder, he's going for it. Oh, the side B, though, gets him. And that's the back throw. And that's the danger of it. Really well done by Banjo using the side B. And Banjo and Kazooie. He barely does it, but he does it. He moves on to the semis. It's coming down to the wire, folks. It's time for the semifinals. For the first of two semifinals matchups, we have Incineroar, the number one seed, versus Ness, the number four seed, on small battlefield. These two characters, I had they need no introduction, man. They are both very, very good. They're both very strong. That's why they're both top four, you know, on the CPU championship leaderboard, man. They both they both could win this and they both could win it all. But Incineroar is he's coming for the crown, my friends. He wants it. Not that Ness isn't, but I, I just feel a different energy, man, from Incineroar. That was a good PK Thunder to get back here, though. Ness with a pretty solid lead here, though, early. He's doing pretty well. I don't think that Magnet is going to be super useful, especially against Incineroar. And you'd think the PK Fire wouldn't be that good, but hey, it's doing some good damage. That was a perfect shield into an up tilt. Very nicely played. Oh, that's going to be a back throw. Incineroar goes down early, and Ness with a significant lead here. We, you know, we won't see Ness versus Lucas in the finals ma matching up. But you know Lucas, he's, you know, he's he's cleaning up in the back. You know, he's, he's trying to get over his loss, but he's he's rooting. He's rooting for Ness. I can, I, I, I would just expect that. He gets back with the PK Thunder. Ness still in this. The perfect shield from Incineroar. Couple of up tilts into the up air as well. Man, man, oh, perfect shield. Jumps over the next one, gets grabbed though. I was gonna say, Ness is playing extremely well. Even hitting the up smash a little bit there. Ness, Ness is going crazy right now. And he's threatening to kill Incineroar again. The PK Thunder, getting a one, getting two. Ooh, but that down air from Incineroar was dirty. And it takes down Ness in his first stock. But man, Incineroar is actually, he's losing out here. This would be, oh, this would be tough for him, man. He's, remember, he's never won a week. The up smash from Ness. But Ness has. He knows how to do it. He knows how to win. He's been here. He's done that. You know what I'm saying? He's confident in himself in the forward smash hits even. Ness on two stocks. 13% in center on his last stock. This is it, man. He's got to go. He's got to turn up. He's got to turn up right now or it's over for him. And that is not what he wants to see. And not what Incineroar fans want to see. The ropes come out, though. He throws them against them. He's got him on the side here going for the up smash. Or sorry, the down smash. 
Oh, it didn't connect though. PK fire coming in. Doesn't do too much though. As you'd expect, the forward smash doesn't connect. The PK Thunder does. Can he jump over it? He's getting cheesed by the PK Thunders. It's not quite the same. Finally, not getting killed by it, but Ness with a massive lead right now. Only needs to hit one more move or a back throw. That could be a stock right there. No, it's going to send the wrong way, so it's not quite going to be there. Incineroar, can he find the grab? Ooh, this is looking real bad for him. The PK Thunder is coming in. Finally gets it shielded, but that's it. Ness with another two stock onto Incineroar of all characters with the dash attack sends himself to grand finals all right for the second and last semi-final matchup we have byleth the number two seed versus banjo the number six seed in the bracket and um this is gonna be very very interesting we've got ganon's castle in the background there oh I, I love love this song by the way this is one of the best zelda songs that there is from Ocarina of Time. You know, this is obviously a uh, remastered, but it's... Man, yeah, this is a good song. A uh, bit of a... Yeah, I just had to point that out, okay? But look, Byleth, Banjo, going up against each other, and... Hey, this is anybody's match, you know what I'm saying? By Byleth taking some damage here. Obviously, I think definitely the betting favorite has to be Byleth. But, hey, Banjo is doing really, really well so far. There are walk-offs on both sides, by the way. They haven't really gone over there. Finally, they have, and Banjo... With a dash attack, takes down Byleth really fast, by the way. Woo but wait, Byleth with that arrow, a perfectly timed arrow, catching Banjo right on the edge. That was super nice and gets right back into this one. That, that was really, really nicely done. Okay, Byleth and Banjo still going back and forth. There we go, Byleth getting a little bit of damage there. Oh, that forward smash actually takes down Byleth. This is what was happening. This is such a quick matchup. Byleth has to do pretty much the same thing that we just saw. Oh my god, I thought that forward smash was going to connect. And maybe get the kill. Byleth finding her toughest match so far. I thought this was going to be the number one versus number two seed for a little bit there. This, is that it? I cannot believe what I just watched. What happened? That was the quickest match we may have ever seen. And Banjo, out of nowhere... Two stocks Byleth and moves to Grand Finals. I... I cannot believe what we just witnessed right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Banjo with one of the craziest games we've ever seen. Defeating Byleth. Moving himself onto the right side of Grand Finals. And here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, all ten weeks. Painstakingly going through the footage. Figuring everything out, doing all the points, getting it all together, going through every single week with all of you. It's been so fun. And it's all led up to this moment right here. If you told me week one that the season one finale, to, you know, the, the match to crown the season one winner was going to be Ness versus Banjo. I would have been like, cool, you know, I, I, that's that's dope. But like, I don't know, <laughs> did anybody see this coming? This is, uh, this is wild. I, I mean, it's not like they're the lowest seeds or something, right? It's four versus six. Ness at four, Banjo at six in terms of seeding. But I, I thought for a little bit there that we were going to get the one versus two, right? The, the first seed versus second seed matchup. But no, no, they, they both got defeated in the semifinals. And this is it. It's Ness. Versus Banjo and Kazooie. What a fun season it has been. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are still here, if anybody's still watching this video, thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you could, you know, give it a like if you enjoyed your time, I would be very thankful. If you want to see a season two, hit that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? I, at some point, I want to do another season. But of course, we've got one final match of season one. To finish <clears throat> and this is it this is the moment Ness versus Banjo <clears throat> for the season one finale who will be crowned champion there's only one way to find out let's go oh man the stage 
This is this is so incredibly intense. I cannot believe it. Ness versus Banjo. This could go either way, man. They have both played extremely well. I mean, Ness has not lost his second stock. We are now on an F0 stage. I think it's an F0 stage. Either way, it's a stage. We're flying around at breakneck speeds, right? Although we will stop every once in a while to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Just chill for a little bit with walk-offs on the side there. I don't know. Look, then we get back onto the platform. We keep it going. Ooh, that was kind of a little scary there for Banjo, who actually jumps off that wall, and Ness wasn't expecting it either. So that's kind of funny. Okay, the up smash does connect, though. Ness with an early lead, but that side B says absolutely not. There is no lead for you, my friend. Okay, little back air right there for Ness. Getting back to the platform. Ooh, nice down air. PK fire. Ooh, but that could be the first stock. It is. And even though Ness looking pretty good, Banjo takes the first stock. He is one stock closer to winning it all, my friends. Ness trying to find something there. He does find the up air perfectly timed. Really well done from Ness to tie this one up. Again, Ness hasn't lost that second stock. Is this the first matchup where he will? I, I have a feeling it is. I get the feeling we're going one stock to one stock at the end here. An intense ending. The jabs coming through, doing a little bit of chip damage. Nothing too crazy, though. Whew, this is incredibly intense. The PK Thunder. What is Ness trying to do with these PK Thunders? I don't know what he's doing. He's just... N Ness. Ness. No, what is Ness doing? Okay, he is... Uh, Ness was going a little bit crazy right there. Uh, maybe just trying to psych out Banjo. You know, trying to make him feel like I just felt. Like, what the hell is he trying to do? I don't know. But look, he, he's, he's back on track. He's okay. He's at 47%. He has not hit Banjo yet. And there we go. Finally with the Nair. He does get a little bit of damage down. This is anybody's game, man. I mean, this is perfectly even. No, Nobody is in the lead, really. I mean, Banjo a little bit, but... Okay, one one big hit there from Ness, and one big hit right back from Banjo. 73% to 35%. Oh, the grab was missed. The back throw's not enough, though. The egg, do a little bit of damage, but saved by this. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. The PK Thunder gets him back to the stage, though. This could be a walk-off kill. No, it's not going to be. They're flying through. They both make it back to the stage. This is so... In oh, my God, this is intense. This is for the Season 1 Championship crown, ladies and gentlemen. Do, I, do you not understand? 99% to 121% right now. That's all oh, big forward smash. And finally, Ness loses his second stock. This could be it. Banjo and Kazooie could be your season one champions if Ness can't find the kills. He does get a good dash attack right there. Not going to find the big hit, though. Finding the PK Thunder. Finding another one. Dash attack. Not going to hit that last bit of it, though. 165% for Banjo. And now he's going a little crazy over on the side here. I don't know what the side... That side of the... The stage right there when they're on this part of it is just making them go a little insane the forward smash missing Ooh, gosh okay the grenade hits the pk fire into the forward smash and ness tying this one up at one stock apiece this is so so close a good little combo there from banjo though gets some extra damage 49 percent on an s already and that is not a good look holding on to that grenade as well not very smart banjo Trying to find like oh my goodness, using the bat to send the... I like that, send the egg. You'd think the egg would crack, but I guess not. 72% one big hit from Banjo could do it, my friends. But can Ness make the comeback happen? Can he do it? Grabs the bomb, throws it away. Doesn't want to see that here on this stage. Another whiff grab. I think Ness is a little scared right now. He's a little nervous. A little too far away. Hits the up smash, though. 85% to 48%. Going for a downer. Not going to find it, though. The egg spam. It's holding him in the corner. This is really tough. The forward air. That's it! Banjo and Kazooie against all the odds as the sixth seed take down Ness. And they are your season one champion. Where were you, ladies and gentlemen? Where were you when Banjo? And Kazooie took the season one crown and put it on their heads. I get crowns? I, how do I... Look, it's two of them. Do they both get a crown? Does just Banjo get a crown? I, we'll give him two crowns. We'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll figure that out. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. They did it. They won. Banjo and Kazooie are your season one. CPU Championship League Champions. Did you expect that?
Did you expect that? Even just, you know, from this week, seeing all the characters here, did you expect them to be the ones to win it all? If you did, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations on your guess. If you didn't, you know, I can't blame you. There's, there's a lot of good picks. But Banjo and Kazooie, against all odds, come out on top as the Season 1 champions. Incredible. What a fun season it was. And a deserving winner. You know what I'm saying? A deserving winner. The the sixth seed overall. Whew. That was that was incredible. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming along on this journey with me through ten weeks of you know, them collecting points. And then here in the final bracket. The Season 1 Top 16 Finale Bracket. <sighs> That's it. That is all she wrote. Season 1 is over. And Banjo and Kazooie are etched into history. As the first ever winners. Here in the CPU CL. Incredible. You can tell your grandkids about them. Anyway. <clears throat> that. That's all I've got. I've got nothing left. I hope you enjoyed this season. And I hope you look forward to a second season because, again, I'd love to do this again. Well, we can, you know, we can see if Banjo and Kazooie can repeat as champions or if we can find a new champion. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? That we've got a ways to go to find that out. Again, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this series, this season, just this video, Go ahead and give it a like for me. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe come watch live. You know what I'm saying? I did make a pretty big blunder while I was live today, but that's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's YouTube exclusive content now. Anyway, that is all I've got. So thank you once again. And for the last time in season one, I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of of your week or month or year or however long it takes me to get to season two. As always, my name is Fuji and I will see you whenever season two does happen for week one, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good one. Peace out.